So this is a quick video on how to work out the dividend yield, dividend per share, and the earnings per share, and then two ways of calculating the dividend payout. One is using the balance sheet and the other is use, using the dividend per share divided by the earnings per share. So most importantly is the difference between a dividend yield and a dividend payout. A dividend yield, which would be given, say, with Coca-Cola, its current dividend yield is 2.97%, which means if you buy in here, that's what you can expect to make on what you've put in. You'll make this in dividends per year. So it's the dividend per share divided by the current market price is the dividend yield. The yield is the income that you generate based on where you got in. So the higher the better. And as time goes on, as a dividend grows, over time a lot of these blue chip stocks, like say the uh, Noble 30, it's called, the European Dividend Aristocrats, to qualify for that, they have to have a market cap above 5 billion euro and they have to have consistently paid their dividends for the last 20 years, if not raised them. So if you bought in, say, down here, you got a great yield because the dividend per share, if it's a blue chip stock, they tend to hold on to their dividend. You know, they want to keep that blue chip stock status. So they want to keep paying the same dividend or raising it. So your yield would be fantastic if you got down here. Say it pays or 30 cents per share. So it would be a 10% yield. But if you bought it up here, it would be a 5% yield because it's closer to $60 per share. So if you want to work out the dividend per share, most of this information will be given out. The websites that I would use for it are the NASDAQ website for the American stocks as well as some of the European ones, but these give a great like layout for the dividend history. So the ex-dividend date is the deadline for you to have bought the stock to qualify for the next dividend. So if you bought in a day after this, you wouldn't get this next dividend. And to play it safe, people generally buy in like two days before. And then if you say buy in, Soon as it passes this expiry date or the ex dividend date, you can sell your shares and you'll still receive the next dividend. But generally, the stock will drop by the amount of the dividend paid out after it's declared or after uh, the ex dividend date passes. This is the other website that I'd use it's Dividend Max. This is great for European and UK dividend stocks. And also has this handy calculator. This is a French dividend stock I have. It's in the railroad industry of the transportation sector. Now, a final dividend means once a year. And if it's a semi-annual dividend, there'll be an interim payment and then a final payment. But this has a handy calculator where you can work out if you own 30 shares. Your next dividend payment would be €7.50, which is paid once a year. Now, most of the details that you need for these calculations, they'll be given either in your trading platform or on these websites, so you don't really have to do these calculations. But just in case you do, let's say you have a company that paid $1 million in dividends in a year. So the sum of dividends in a certain period will, will say one year. That figure, $1 million, is then divided by the amount of shares that the stock has issued. These would be called outstanding shares. So just to keep things simple, let's say it has 1 million shares issued or 1 million shares outstanding. That means that the dividend per share is 1 million divided by 1 million, which is 1. And then you can use this dividend per share to work out the earnings per share. So the net income, let's say the same company as this one, earned $10 million. It would be $10 million, the net income, minus the dividends on the preferred stock, which was $1 million. 
and then that n figure you'll be left with 9 million that is then divided by the outstanding shares so just to keep it simple there's 1 million shares issued and you would end up with $9 earnings per share that's how much the company earns per share that it has outstanding and the second part is the dividend ratio this is the percentage of the stock's earnings that the dividend makes up so generally say Berkshire Hathaway for example that's Warren Buffett's fund and Charlie Munger I think they just added it to trading 2 and 2 recently but they don't pay any dividend they keep everything that they make to grow the company further because he said it himself in interviews that he knows he can make a better return on that money look trading for four hundred and twenty four thousand dollars for one share unbelievable so if he paid a dividend this wouldn't have grown as fast as it has or even to this level because a huge amount of the earnings would be paid out to shareholders as a dividend so if it pays zero it generally means good growth but if it's paying out nothing and it's not growing that's a bad sign anything up to 30 percent is safe but it's not a great return for you as an investor between 30 and 50 percent is the sweet spot means they're keeping at least half their earnings but they're also paying half their earnings out to dividend as dividends to shareholders and over 50 percent is where it starts getting dangerous you know if they're paying more than half of their income out that's generally not sustainable they'll either cut the dividend which they can at any time you know if you look up the information on uh, dividends for any company say coca-cola and you make a plan for yourself of how much you'll receive in dividends they could cancel the dividend tomorrow like if things get really bad big financial crises or uh, recessions or something like the lockdown that happened last year loads of stocks cut their dividends and loads of them stop paying them so it's not 100 percent reliable but yeah these are just some simple calculations if you want to work any of this stuff out yourself but generally it's given you know all the stuff that you'll need uh, this PE ratio is called the price to earnings ratio but it will give you things like the annual dividend or the dividend yield the stuff that you'll need for these calculations you won't have to work everything out yourself but there it is just in case you need it